The jump from Dynasty Warriors 2 to Dynasty Warriors 3 feels like a good summation of how nearly all sequels in the Dynasty Warriors series operate, in that they aren't really jumps at all as much as they are unceremonious hops. In this review, we'll be taking a look at what specifically was changed in Dynasty Warriors 3, what stayed the same, and whether or not the small move forward feels like enough to truly be considered a real sequel. With how iterative this continuation is, I would definitely advise you watch my review of Dynasty Warriors 2, as a lot of my thoughts on this follow-up are directly related to how it compares to 2. Link is in the description below. It's finally time. Yes! Broadly speaking, Dynasty Warriors 3 is very much the same game as the game that came before it, and most of the games that came after it for that matter. You play as a named soldier during the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era in China, cutting down hordes and hordes of enemies with different combinations of attacks. The way the story is told is structured near identically to Warriors 2 as well, bearing a far closer similarity to fighting games than most of their successors. Each character has its own arcade-style gauntlet of missions to complete before you are crowned victorious and can move on and do it again with the next character. The missions are loosely strung together with brief cutscenes that don't do quite enough to invite players unfamiliar with the franchise in. This is definitely an unfortunate similarity to its predecessor, as neither of these games came to adopt the much more approachable faction-driven campaigns of later entries in the series. Because of this, Dynasty Warriors 3's story is much more of a greatest hits of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms major fights, rather than a narrative that can be easily followed from beginning to end. Go! Ye children of the Yellow Turban! Break the siege of the Yellow Turban! Though the story itself and the confines within which it is told remain largely untouched, a lot more of that story seeps itself into the levels themselves. More dialogue is contained within any given battle, and the cutscenes that brief you on changes within the war zone are much more varied and frequent. Scripted events during the levels may prompt an enemy sorcerer to freeze the moat surrounding a castle, allowing enemy troops to flood in without the use of bridges. Or perhaps you may be baited onto a fleet of wooden ships before the enemy archers set the armada ablaze. Events like this weren't absent from Dynasty Warriors 2, but the difference here is that whereas they may have been an infrequent set piece before, they are now a twist you can expect from nearly every battle you partake in. Perhaps more importantly is the game's technical ability to keep up with all of this variety. Dynasty Warriors 2 had a tendency to stutter when any special effects were on screen, and the new engine here is a notable improvement. Few distance increases, the number of enemies on screen at any given time increases, and the frame rate increases. Performance goes beyond just visual improvements as well, with a lot of the sound mixing being far superior here, especially the fact that now all interactions with opposing generals on the battlefield are fully voiced. The new engine likely could have given the game's performance some breathing room for Tecmo Koei to introduce one of Dynasty Warriors 3's most significant new features, multiplayer. The entire game can be played alongside a friend cooperatively, as well as a new multiplayer-focused versus mode where you can compete against each other doing specific objectives. Though multiplayer usually isn't my gig in Dynasty Warriors, I definitely wanted to mention this as I know for many of you out there, Dynasty Warriors is a cooperative experience at its core, even if it isn't one for me. Most of the other changes to the game aren't quite as large as the addition of multiplayer. Like I mentioned, Dynasty Warriors is a series content with making small improvements on itself over time rather than reinventing the wheel with each new game. The changes here are mainly some areas doing slightly more or slightly better. There's better map variety here, for example, with each location feeling visually distinct and different in terms of how it looks and how it plays. There's more characters to play as, even if their stories have quite a large degree of overlap. There's more items and weapons to unlock for those individual characters, so completionists will fill their time attempting to unlock new and unique fourth tier weapons for each character, on top of the traditional leveling up that the series already had. Each of the new weapons feels like they see a greater degree of change here as well, with most introducing a brand new visual onto your character as well as longer combos and new spell effects. And my favorite change is how significantly toned down the enemy officer healing is. Officers now feel like they have a reasonable amount of health that won't regenerate, barring any easily readable effects or changes that may happen to them over the course of the fight. Oh, and you can ride elephants now too. 
There's also some challenge modes you can partake in should you wish to push your capabilities to their limit. They're a nice inclusion, but their far more limited scope prevents them from being the center of attention like the main game is. This review is coming to its close pretty soon because I feel like everything I could say about this game I've also said in my Dynasty Warriors 2 review. They're so incredibly similar. You still hack and slash your way through ancient China, the music still kicks ass, South Cao still has ambition, Lu Bu is still a savage, and the bow combat still sucks. It's unfortunate that this sequel doesn't have the story framed in quite as strong a way as later games in the series do, but that gripe wasn't enough for me having an enjoyable time with this game. My relatively harsh review of Dynasty Warriors 2 had me concluding with calling the game more of a tech demo than an actual game and the small improvements made to this game definitely feel like they're enough to carry the series out of that valley. Despite how small and iterative the steps forward here are, what makes Dynasty Warriors 3 a strong game is that there are no simultaneous steps back. It is truly a great sequel in the sense that it solely improved on the original's formula, even if it didn't go far enough in some areas.